did Pope Francis say that the SSPX are no longer in schism? Is that true? Did he come out and say that? The answer is no. He didn't just come out and say that carte blanche. There's a lot more to the story. It's a lot more nuanced than that. And people aren't even looking up the facts. What people are doing is they're taking a screenshot from a video which says, Pope Francis says, SSPX are not in schism and they're just showing that screenshot and sharing that screenshot but they actually <laughs> I don't think they actually watched the video it's similar to what happened when Pope Francis uh, supposedly said that uh, cross of Christ was a failure and Protestants went crazy and many Catholics went crazy but they didn't watch the video they didn't listen to the statements they didn't look at the context and this is exactly what's going on here as well when in reality it's much deeper it's much different and it's much more dubious so let's get into this are the SSPX in schism yes they are Kennedy Hall what are the facts let's look at the facts here but let me just say something right up front before we look at these facts and see what the Archbishop had to say about him. We don't have Pope Francis's actual words. Pope Francis didn't actually say this. Like, there's no writing. There's no video. We don't have his actual words. What we're relying on is someone else's words and what he said about the Pope and what he claimed. But this Archbishop, Vitus Hulander, who claimed this, has become an SSPXer himself, a sympathizer. He gives all their talking points. So this is coming from a dubious place. It's what people have done in the past over and over again with plain interviews saying, oh, the Pope said this, the Pope said that, the Pope's, and then it's come out later that, oh, no, he didn't actually say that. The Vatican clarified. And this is, again, what it's he said, she said. But in this case, it's not a credible source. As we're going to see, the Archbishop not only gives outlandish, sophomoric, and slanderous claims against the Catholic Church, but also against the Pope himself. He basically accuses the Catholic Church of being in schism, and we're supposed to believe him and what he has to say. We're supposed to take him as a credible, non-dubious source. That's problematic for me, very problematic. One of the first things this Archbishop Vita says is that Pope Benedict removed the unjust excommunication of Archbishop Lefebvre and the SSPX priests. Now, this is a sophomoric, huge blunder. I mean, so grave, I can't even believe he said it out loud. Like, the excommunication of Archbishop Lefebvre has never been rescinded. It's never been removed. It's still there. So the fact that he gets this so wrong and he thinks that it's been removed, if he got that wrong, what did he get wrong with the Pope as well? Or what he thinks the Pope said? Or maybe he misinterpreted what the Pope said. But the excommunication of Archbishop Lefebvre has never been rescinded. Yes, the SSPX priests, Pope Benedict removed their excommunications to try to move them from a place of schism back to full communion with the church. They refused, therefore they're still objectively in schism. But the excommunication of Lefebvre has never been removed. In fact, he died in a state of excommunication. And the church teaches that that is hell. We don't know for sure, we never can, but it's a scary place to die. Now, he also gives the speaking points, the talking points of the SSPX. He calls it an unjust excommunication, showing that he has been drinking the Kool-Aid of the SSPX. He has gone over to their side. He's giving their talking points. He's basically sharing what they believe. They're the only ones who believe it's an unjust excommunication, their small little sect. Everyone else knows that it was a just excommunication and that Pope John Paul II tried to do everything to work with Archbishop Lefebvre to give him what he needed and wanted. And even the Archbishop agreed to the terms, reneged later, the church bent over backwards for him and he just refused and he was disobedient to rightful authority he had warning after warning after warning to recant to repent to come back and he didn't and the excommunications are so authoritative they cannot be mistaken the second thing he says is that the catholic church left the tradition and the teaching of the church does that make any sense do you know what he's saying? He's saying that the, and, and later on he says that the Catholic Church left the tradition and the teachings of the church, what the church has handed on. He's basically accusing the Catholic Church itself of being in schism. 
This is the source we're supposed to be listening to. This itself brings about a censor. Like, this guy should be censored. Like, canonically. Like, he shouldn't be. <laughs> this is insane. He's claiming that the Catholic Church is in schism. He's claiming that the popes are in schism. Why? Because they have not upheld the teachings of Jesus Christ. They've not held the traditions. They've changed them. They've departed from the teachings. This is a serious, grievous, slanderous charge, but it shows you his mindset and the mindset of the SSPX, which is, ironically, a schismatic mindset. This is the mindset of schism, to say that the Catholic Church has gone astray, therefore, we are right. That's exactly what Luther said. He thought the church went astray, the Pope went astray, they lost the true teachings of Christianity, the pure, pristine teachings. Many people have claimed that, and it's a very grievous claim. We have two videos, if you're interested, showing that the SSPRs, in fact, are in schism. And we give papal documents, authoritative statements, church documents, and so on. We list everything so nobody can accuse us of just giving our own opinion. And you can check those out at the end. But even worse, even more nonsensical, this archbishop has the audacity to claim and to, to give in to conspiracy theories and SSPX and other people talking points that the Pope himself is starting a one-world religion, or at least he endorses a one-world religion. This is nonsense. We've already debunked this on our channel. I mean, Protestants are like buzzing bees saying that the Catholic Church is starting a one-world religion and the Pope is at the head of it. Atheists are saying it, and the SSPX supporters, some of them are even saying it as well, including this guy. He's buying into conspiracy theories that the Pope is endorsing a one-world order, and it's just not true. And again, we're supposed to believe this guy? We're supposed to take him as credible? How are we supposed to believe what he says about what the Pope says about SSPX when he can't even get any of these basic facts or information correct? It's dubious. I'm not going to get into everything else he said because we're trying to keep this clear and concise here, but there are many other charges, serious, grievous, slanderous charges that he made against the Pope and against the church that just aren't true factually, logically, or anything else. They're just not true. So why would we take this man's word for it? I mean, we don't have the Pope's words. We only have his words. And so far, his words are not reliable. The only statements we do have about Pope Francis on the SSPX and schism are that they are in schism, yes. And we have Pope Francis's own words in writing talking about them being in schism. So we don't have to guess it. Like, literally, it comes down to, we, have, we can take what Pope Francis actually said versus what we think this guy might have said in a private conversation, what he may or may not have gotten correct, what he may or may not have misinterpreted. And as we're going to see in a second, even if what he said is true, it still doesn't prove his point and it still doesn't change anything and the Pope still did not endorse anything. Even if the Pope did say that, it doesn't change anything canonically. It doesn't change the official objective status of the SSPX. It's kind of like if the Pope said something on an airplane, you know, oh, homosexuality is okay. Well, okay, he's, he's allowed his opinions. He's allowed to say something. That is not an authoritative statement. He never said that, of course, and we have a video debunking that as well. But even if he did, it doesn't change the church teaching because it's not an authoritative statement. And likewise, just talking with a bishop in private has no authority. It's just two people talking, and we don't even know what he said. So there is no authoritative statement made on this, which means that the authoritative statements on this still stand. In order for this to change, the Pope would literally have to make a statement, like a worldwide statement, and change this canonically at the highest levels to change their schismatic status to back to full communion with Rome. He's never done that. It's not done now, and therefore they are still in schism. So the whole context of this thing, which I don't think maybe most people didn't watch, or maybe they just breezed through it, I don't think what they saw is what this Archbishop actually said. He had this long conversation with the Pope, and he had this long conversation about how he's trying to justify Archbishop Lefebvre, of course, all the SSPX talking points, and he was such a martyr, and he, he was trying to do the right thing, which 
I agree, he thought he was doing the right thing. So did Luther, by the way. They both thought they were trying to reform the church. They both thought they were trying to save the church from uh, heresy, from the church going astray, from the Pope. Of course, <laughs> Luther is infinitely worse than Archbishop Lefebvre. I'm not trying to make that connection. But they do have similarities, and they both thought that they were trying to retain the purity of the faith. No one's doubting that. And it was an emergency state in the church. The church was leaderless. It had no leaders. It needed someone to help them, which first of all doesn't make any sense since we had a great pope, Pope John Paul II. We had a lot of great bishops. It was being led, especially by the ultimate leader, the Holy Spirit, who Jesus Christ sent to guide the church into all truth. Same as always, 2,000 years. You're telling me it's leaderless? Give me a break. The bottom line is he didn't have a reason for doing this. He went against outright express authoritative proclamations from the Pope, which you cannot do without going into schism or being excommunicated. So maybe, yes, I'm sure he had good intentions. So did Luther, but they both went about it the wrong way way. I mean, literally, Archbishop Lefebvre said that the Pope in the seat of Rome is filled with antichrists. That's literally the exact wording that Martin Luther used. But they're literally speaking the same talking points. <laughs> I'm getting passionate here because I can't believe the resemblances between the two. He said, oh, but I want to uphold the see of Peter while he demonizes it and says it's from the devil himself. He says, I want to uphold the papacy while he condemns it and refuses to obey it. You didn't. You didn't. And you got excommunicated because of it. And now this Archbishop Vitas is giving the exact same talking points and is sympathetic to Archbishop Lefebvre. And he's saying that it's in this context that the Pope said that they are not in schism. What context? is he talking about? That he had good intentions, that he wasn't trying to break away from the church. That wasn't his intention. He was sincere. He just really, truly wanted to save souls. And the Pope was saying, yeah, maybe in that sense, he wasn't schismatic. But in an objective sense, that's the subjective sense, maybe he had good intentions, but the objective sense <laughs> is that he did go into schism doing it. He did go about it the wrong way. They are in schism. And that has been the clear, concise, unchanged teaching of the church objectively. And in fact, Pope Benedict XVI said until they fix their heresies and come back into union with the Pope and submit to Rome, they still will not be in communion with Rome and have no active or licit ministry, period, which is why we can't attend SSPX churches. Can I just say that these are the same people, the SSPX, who demonize the Pope constantly. It's always attacks on the Pope. They mock him. They attack him. They tear him down. They call him the Antichrist. They say he's creating schism in the church. They're basically telling all of these evil things while saying, oh, but we support the papacy. No, you don't. You do on paper, you don't in reality. And these are the people who suddenly think he's a, a raving theologian. These are the people who say he can't even say anything right. Everything that comes out of his mouth is wrong, 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 wrong. Suddenly, he supposedly says that they're not in schism. Oh, he's the greatest theologian in the church. Listen to the Pope. They don't listen to him for anything. And now we're just supposed to listen to him because he supports your cherry-picked view? Give me a break. That's cherry-picking. Taking what you want and leaving the rest. Suddenly his authority matters. Suddenly he got it right when he can't get anything right according to these people. Suddenly he's not the Antichrist. Give me a break, people. That's a double standard. <laughs> I'm not buying it. So, in summary, this archbishop did want to go into retirement. He had good intentions to bring the church and SSPX hopefully back together, but staying there, studying them, um, looking into them deeper, he bought into their worldview, which he now regurgitates to the world, and he sticks up for the SSPX, and he tries to promote Archbishop Lefebvre. While demonizing Vatican II, the Catholic Church, uh, the Novus Ordo, Pope Francis, and other things, he makes countless irresponsible statements that are so far from factually true that they can't even be taken seriously. He can't even be taken as a credible source. So why would I believe what he said or what he and how do I know he interpreted it correctly or heard it correctly when he hasn't got any of this other information correct? He's misguided and confused on the church's teaching, history, Vatican II, and several other things. So why would I take his word for it, and it's just his word, people, rather than what the Pope actually has said? 
the Pope hasn't also changed anything from a canonical level, which he would have to do for any of this to change, for them not to be in schism. His words, even if he did say that, it doesn't change anything. It's just his opinion at best. It's a conversation. It's based on one part of a conversation that we don't even know what they were talking about or the context of it. We're just taking his word for it and his word is dubious at best. But it still does not change the objective fact that the SSPX are in schism, that Pope Francis has said it, Pope John Paul II said it, Pope Benedict said it. I mean, literally, oh, but they're not good enough. <laughs> That's Protestantism. She's going to ignore all the Pope's statements, authority, and everything else because it doesn't fit what you want. It's Protestantism. It's Protestant mentality. It's a Protestant mindset. And I would pray that the Holy Spirit open up the eyes and ears and hearts of these people to see that, to take the scales from their eyes, to see that, and to come back home to Rome. I hope this has helped to clarify some of this matter. Again, if you want the full facts, everything. Go check out Michael Lofton's channel, Reason and Theology. He goes into the statements. He shows them on the screen. Gets into pretty big details about it if that interests you. But I hope that we gave you the nutshell version, that it's helpful. I hope you'll share it with others and defend the church as it should be. So please like and share this video. Please check out our website, catholictruth.org. Check out our podcast, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, pretty much anything else that you want for daily inspiration below. And if you could support our ministry so we can make more videos like this and keep bringing the truth to people, please consider giving monthly, $100 a month, 50, 20, whatever you can give. It all goes back to the salvation of souls and the defense of the truth. God bless you. Thank you.